in all honesty, what's going through my head is what problems have I left behind for my wife that I forgot to take care of. Um, I have a little different situation. I come from a military family, so we're used to separation almost. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different of a situation than people that are used to always being together. But my freshman year being away, I live in Connecticut, so it's about a six or seven hour ride. So I was used to being here by myself and without my family for the whole first two semesters of my college career. So for me, it was in my family, it was pretty easy. However, my girlfriend kind of struggled with it, and I think that you just need to take it day to day and not look to the to the long term of you getting off the ship, but more or less to get that email every day from the, your significant other or, or your family and uh, look forward to that and not look forward to getting off the ship. Because if you look forward to the last day of cruise and getting off, it's just going to be a long, miserable cruise. So. We're heading for Cove, Ireland and we've made arrangements with uh, Ocean Survival Institute there for all of the students that will be on, on board at that point to go through a day's worth of training through damage control simulators, uh, essentially a mock-up of the ship that where they can actually do flooding and uh, the students will have to patch pipes while they're trying to keep the water from getting too high and uh, patch breaches in the hull. And then they'll also be doing storm training where the, the facility has the ability to simulate uh, a storm in the pool. And so the students will have to do life raft uh, inflation, uh, boarding, and then they'll have to get out and go through a simulated helicopter hoist evolution. And so that's each, each student will go through this while we're in Cove. And then we'll head from Cove to Norfolk, Virginia. So this is the helm where uh, a freshman will be here taking uh, rudder commands or steering commands from the officer on watch. So they, you know, surprisingly small steering wheel, ship's wheel, and a couple different compass uh, repeaters for them to take bearings and make sure that they're, they're doing what was ordered. Over here you have, they're called an ectus sets essentially take a radar couple it with a chart plotter and a computer and so it will take contacts your your chart position and kind of merges it all together and uh, what we used to do with a lot of grease pencils and and mark it on screens now it's done by computer and you can manipulate the data there for different scenarios things that you might want to look at you know as far as avoiding hazards Okay, so this is one of our ship service diesel generators. We have three of them aboard the state of Maine that power pretty much everything aboard the ship. Right now we're on shore power. However, once we get on cruise, obviously we will not be on shore power. So we'll tra uh, transfer all our power onto the uh, ship service diesel generators. So this is the engine right here. We're burning two different fuels most of the time. Uh, so the, the generators will be running on a, what's called diesel fuel marine. Uh, and uh, the main engines run on a heavier fuel oil, a little bit less refined, called IFO 180. And so between the two, two types of fuel over the course of cruise, uh, for 90 days we're going to end up burning, at today's prices, about six hundred to $700,000 worth of fuel, uh, which will equate to about two hundred to 300,000 gallons. We're coming back from Eastport and there was a fishing vessel off of uh, St. John's that was putting out a distress call. They had a casualty on board. So we launched a, a rescue boat to send our doctor over to see if we could help out. Unfortunately, the, the patient passed away before we could get to them, but um, we got to see the students respond in that crisis situation, in that something that we couldn't have foreseen. Uh, they. The Coast Guard was preparing to send a helicopter out to evacuate this person. Well, we don't train the students typically for helicopter operations, so it was get a group of them together, tell them what needs to be done, and watching them coalesce as a group and, and really turn to to make things happen. Uh, last year, it was a sailboat in distress halfway across the Atlantic. They were caught in a storm. We were asked to turn back into the storm to, to go render assistance. Um, it is, so there's always stuff like that that happens. You're taking a 500-foot ship across the Atlantic. That's not a friendly environment. So 
things are already are naturally going to happen. That's part of why this is a, a component of the training program. It's going to give you those aha or gotcha moments where everybody sits around and you know, in even for the officers, we may hit a point where we're sitting there scratching our heads with the students, saying, "Okay, how how are we going to address this?" We, we train them for a life potentially at sea, but there's a lot of parallels to the skills that the students learn here that they carry into any number of industries. If you look at our alumni list, the majority of our graduates don't stay at sea for 40 years. They may ship out for 5, 10 years, uh, 15, some for 20. Some do a shorter time and end up, uh, we've got lawyers, doctors, business, uh, heads of, of major businesses, heads of shipyards, uh, heads of power plants. There, there's so many ways that the that the education experience here can translate into non-seagoing jobs.